problems. But despite those woes, Mike Dick expressed this week in his press conference that one thing that worried him was the ability of the Raiders receivers to get deep. He said speed is the one thing you can't coach and maybe the one thing you can't coach against. Well, besides coaching against it, Al Davis did not bring in Jay Schrader for the simple fact that he wanted him to throw short passes. Schrader's there to throw bombs, and they're going to stretch the defense. Well, the winner today might be the quarterback that's okay, not necessarily great. You said At the unusually left. crowded mausoleum in a grade A game of smash ball. And unusually crowded, they get only 50 usually, but 80,000 plus on hand at the mausoleum where Art Shell is undefeated at 8 all. Second play. Jay Schrader, first play of the second position. Schrader, the bomb to Willie Gold. 59 yards down to the Bears' two-yard line. Three plays later, so dangerous down at the goal line is Marcus Allen. Always been a great slasher going into the end zone. For his size, he finds a way to get there. Raiders lead at 7-0. Mike Ditka telling Jim Harbaugh, be careful with these guys. Harbaugh says, forget it. I'm going to throw it. Dennis Gentry burns Terry McDaniel. These two close to the best squads going deep. And the game is tied at seven all. Is this the year that Jay Schrader becomes a force? Uh, at times he looks good. Nice pass to Willie Galt of 29 yards. Then the other running back, other than Marcus, that is before Bo, Greg Bell, the cutback. 25 yards and does recover his own fumble. Same drive, two plays later. Greg Bell, dirt by Mike Singletary, results in a Jeff Mick Jagger field goal of 27 yards, and the Raiders lead at 10-7. Mike Ditka knew he'd see some of his defense sooner or later. Raider defense, though, struck first. In Bear territory, Harbaugh in a pickle. And I don't mean Mark Blassick. Aaron Wallace causes the fumble. Great Townsend recovers for a touchdown. 17-7, the Raiders. Let's take another look. This is a play, Chris, that Harbaugh should have eaten the ball, should have gotten down on the ground. He has to realize where he is on the football field. Main thing coaches want you to do is protect the football. Don't give up easy scores. Third defensive touchdown for the Raiders this year, but the Bears fighting back. Harbaugh to James Thornton, 23-yard pickup, but there's always a price you pay. Well, nice job of Harbaugh standing in, but Townsend, ouch. Five plays later. Is it the reverse? No, it's the fake reverse and the option pass. Johnny Bailey to James Thornton. 12-yard pickup, and Ditka says to beat a good defense, got to pull out all the stops. Bears fight back, literally. The trail at 17-10 at the half. It would have been nice if Neil Anderson's ribs weren't broken. 26 yards rushing today until he had to leave. Needless to say, that hurt the Bears' offense big time. But Jay Schrader was effective. Spot swerving Mervin Fernandez on a key. Third down play. A trader completed nine last week, completed eight today. Eight plays later, Marcus Allen gets the pitch. A couple of nice cutbacks. Touchdown. 24-10. The Raiders. Good to see Marcus back. 12 carries for 57 yards. The LA defense is closed down. Chicago in the second half. Recorded six sacks. Scott Davis does the honor here. And the silver and black is definitely back. Raiders, 4-0. That's right, the Raiders. They beat the Bears by the count of 24-10, and we say that in honor of our friend uh, Al Davis. And uh, in this ball game, uh, the Raiders continuing to, to impress on defense. Six more sacks today, Tommy. And the strength of any good Raider team. I'm going to switch to the other side of the football. Al Davis loves the offensive line. Uh, for the years that we played them and when they were at the top of their game, as they are now, they open up the holes. They run the football. Everything offensively is keyed off of that. There's a problem, though, that you alluded to that's going to arrive in a couple of weeks. One guy named Bo Jackson. I don't know how they're going to handle it. Well... Going back to the defensive side of the ball, I think it should be noted today, because not people, many people have noted it, we talk about LT and many of the other greats. Greg Townsend just may be the biggest defensive force in the NFL this year. On offense, the games that Marcus and Greg Bell had today, hey, Bo, don't quit your summer job. Whatever's worked for the Raiders, uh, they look impressive. Uh, they get only eight completions today from their quarterback. The Bears had eight completions from their quarterback. Usually that's been enough to win. Today was the Raiders winning 24-10 to 10 at 3-1. and one. Receivers, 100-yard receivers today, Rob Moore. You saw some of his performance for the Jets against the Pats. I wish they didn't give him Wesley's Walker. Wesley Walker's number 85, though. Hey, but that's the way it is. Let's pull it back. 
America came to play bear football, but lately in the Coliseum, it's been a shell game where the trick is keeping your eye on the ball. Trader, play fake, good blocking, back, airing it out, way down the field, goal is open, goal takes it on the eight, goal is tackled on the four, and the bomb explodes at the Coliseum. The Raiders' trademark bomb set up the game's first score, but the Bears uncharacteristically countered in kind. He's going to fire up the middle, and he's got a man open, gets it at the 50, gets it at the 40, being chased by McDaniel, he's at the 20, he's at the 10, he's at the 5, touchdown Bears, 80 yards! With Neil Anderson slowed by sore ribs, the Bears didn't grind it out. Instead, the Bears' passing game showed some unusual diversity and rare finesse. While the Raiders may have been out finesse, they refused to be out hustled. Number 42, Vance Mueller, was beaten on a blitz by rookie linebacker Ron Cox. And though Mueller cost his quarterback some sore ribs, he didn't cost his team the ball. Mueller's display of grit was a flashback to old-time Raider football. Indeed, the more the Raiders win, the tougher they appear. And while that may be an illusion, the truth is that their defense is the NFL's stingiest and their record equal to the league's best. And rolling to the right is Harbaugh to the shotgun, pursued by Townsend, pursued by Wallace, and Wallace gets in, the ball goes into the end zone, and the Raiders have a touchdown! Greg Townsend gets a touchdown recovery in the end zone! The Raiders had not won four games in September since they were defending Super Bowl champions in 1984. So keep your eye on the shell in the middle of your screen, for after one magic month, he's taking the whole league for a ride. The Raiders have been truly dominating on defense, allowing only two touchdowns in the first four games. The Raiders' turnaround, I think, can be attributed to one man, Art Shell. It was after a 1-3 start in 1989 that Al Davis named Shell the new head football coach. More importantly, the first black head football coach in the modern era of the National Football League. The Raiders are 11-5 since Art took over, including a perfect 8-0 mark in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Art Shell now joins Nick Bonacani for our NFL Crosstalk. All right, congratulations, because this marks the first anniversary as head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders. What has brought this team back so quickly and put them on top of the AFC West? Well, the biggest thing is this team believes in, believe, believes in each other and they believe in themselves. And they believe that um, it's, it's a one unit and they can get a lot of things accomplished by just playing as just one. And um, they're going out playing hard and they're having a lot of fun. And if they continue to do that, we always have a chance. Now, I said all year long that of any team that's playing in the National Football League, this team is playing like a team. Now, in the middle of the season, in comes Bo Jackson. Now, you have three running backs. They, they're doing well. Marcus Allen is performing well. I said that intruding Bo Jackson into that lineup will hurt more than help the Raiders. I don't agree with you, Nick. I, I think Bo is a great asset to our football team, to this organization. And I think when he comes in, and the players understand this, that they understand that Bo is a, is a great talent. And when he comes in, he's fresh, got the fresh legs, and he can, he can be a big Im impact for our football team. So they look forward to him, having him come in. This year, the controversy happens to be women reporters in the locker room. This week, Sam White made a big issue of it when let a woman in the, re in the locker room. Are you having any problems with female reporters in the locker room? None whatsoever. Uh, we've had them in, in our locker room since, uh, since the middle of the 70s when uh, reporters w started coming in and wanting to, you know, to do their job. And we understand this, and they have equal access to our football team. And just like anybody else, they have a job to do, and we understand that, and we welcome in them into our locker room. You are the first... Uh, NFL head black coach in the modern era. Do you think that the NFL is making progress in this area, Art, and who do you see as the possible next head coach in the NFL? Well, I can't, I can't project um, who is the next guy. There are a lot of capable people out there that's capable of coaching in the National Football League that are minorities. And I can only just say that if I am successful, um, hopefully 
others will come along and have the same kind of opportunity that I've had. And um, I just want to take advantage of the opportunity that Mr. Davis gave me and do the best that I can with this job, understanding that this, that if I can't do the job, then I'll be the first black that's fired. You know, this, this year here, five teams hired new head coaches. <clears throat> and I didn't see anywhere where any black players, I mean, any black coaches, assistant coaches, were considered for those jobs. Why? I can't, I really, I can't answer uh, um, that question because I don't know what, what the criteria is for other organizations. Um, for this organization, all it means is that uh, we want to win. And whoever Mr. Davis feels uh, was necessary to lead this football team to make it a winner, that's how he chose his winner. But he also had Tom Flores, who's another minority. But for the other organizations around, this, around the league, I can't speak for them because I'm not in the interview process and I don't know what, what's going on there. Do you know any of the candidates uh, who may have been uh, talked to who were passed over for this um, job? Jimmy Ray, um, who's in New England now, was one of the guys that was interviewed for a job. Um, uh, a few years ago, Dennis Green, who's at Stanford now, was interviewed for a job. And uh, they're, they're very capable people, just a matter of getting the opportunity to do it. How much progress do you think has been made in this area? And if you had an opportunity, how would you speed up the process? I just think each organization has to take a look and see who, who are the people that are qualified. And um, forget the color, forget all those things, and just look... Who is very capable of leading your football team? Who is very capable of winning? And I think if you put all those things aside and just look at those, that criteria, then I think you can get accomplished what you want to accomplish, which is to put somebody in charge of your football team that's capable of winning. All right, you've been successful this year. And uh, uh, on behalf of my, my colleagues here at uh, Inside the NFL, we want to congratulate you on your first anniversary as a head coach, and best of luck for the rest of the year. Thank you. Sunday night's game in Buffalo.